Imagine looking up at the sky, spotting what seems like an ordinary pigeon and realizing it might not just be a bird, but a drone in disguise. That's the idea behind a new wave of neurotechnology experiments, often described as bio-drones, where living animals are guided using implanted electrodes instead of being trained or mechanically controlled. Hi, my name is Soumya Pele and welcome to another episode of Pure Science. The concept of biodrones made headlines again after Russian company Neri claimed it had successfully implanted tiny neural chips into pigeons and used them as remotely guided flying platforms. It sure sounds like science fiction, but the root of this technology goes back decades and the implications today are bigger than most people realize. The basic concept of a biodrone is surprisingly simple. Instead of building a flying robot from scratch, you start with a creature already perfectly evolved for the job. Pigeons are exceptional long-distance flyers, ravens can carry heavier loads, seabirds can cruise for thousands of kilometers across oceans. And the best part, these birds don't need batteries, rotors or aerodynamic tweaks because nature has already handled that part of it. So researchers focus not on flight mechanics, but on influencing the bird's decision. And that is done by a method called neurostimulation. Scientists map regions of a brain's bird involved in orientation, turning and motivation with careful stereotactic surgery, which is a precise image-guided method, they implant microelectrodes in these areas. When these electrodes deliver specific pulses, they don't puppeteer the bird like a drone joystick. Instead, they nudge internal impulses. In simpler terms, they make the bird feel the urge to turn left, climb or keep going straight. It's closer to suggestion than to mechanical control. Neri's performance figure suggests that a pigeon equipped as a PJN1 biodrone can fly up to 310 miles in a day. With consistent sunlight, the company estimates that the bird could cover nearly 1850 miles in a week. But this as a concept is not new. In the 2000s, several labs demonstrated early versions of remote-guided pigeons using wired or backpack stimulators. However, back then, the control was crude, the gear bulky and the outcomes unpredictable. But in the past decade, the supporting technologies have changed dramatically. Wireless stimulators have become smaller and lighter. GPS modules and transmitters can fit on a bird's back without weighing it down. Solar trickle charging means longer flight times without swapping batteries. And neuroscientists now have more detailed maps of avian motor circuits than ever before. These advancements don't magically solve all the old problems, but they make the idea more plausible than at any time in the past. Neri's claims fit into that trajectory. According to the company, pigeons are implanted with electrodes using a controlled surgery. After recovery, the birds wear a small backpack carrying a stimulator, a controller, GPS tracking and a solar panel. Neri says an operator can upload a flight path and the bird will follow it without any behavioural training, responding only to neural cues. The company has floated impressive numbers like a pigeon can cover around 500 kilometers in a day or nearly 2000 kilometers in a week under ideal sunlight conditions. A word of caution though, these are still claims, not independently verified facts and the company hasn't released scientific data on animal welfare, implant stability or actual success rates. But the underlying idea that directional impulses can be triggered through brain stimulation is consistent with past research. If this technology works even moderately well, the implications are huge. A biodrone doesn't look like a machine. It doesn't buzz like a quad copper. It doesn't run out of batteries in 45 minutes. It blends perfectly with the environment, which is a major advantage for wildlife monitoring, environmental surveys, or more controversially, surveillance and military reconnaissance. Birds naturally navigate dense cityscapes and narrow corridors, something many mechanical drones struggle with. Larger birds could, 
in theory, carry sensors for radiation, gas leaks or structural monitoring. Ocean-faring birds could act as ultra-long-range sentinels. From a purely engineering perspective, using biology as a hardware is efficient, stealthy and cost-effective. But this is also where the idea becomes uncomfortable. A living creature isn't a replaceable platform. Implanting electrodes directly into its brain and overriding its natural decision-making raises obvious ethical concerns. We are not talking about training an animal using rewards. We are talking about manipulating internal neural signals so that the bird believes it wants to fly or turn somewhere. Ethicists argue that this crosses an important line. It treats a sentient being as a controllable tool. And because Neri and similar projects operate largely on secrecy, there is very little transparency about animal welfare. How many surgeries fail? Do implants cause long-term pain or behavioral disruptions? How often do birds reject or damage the implants? We simply don't know. There are also regulatory and security concerns. Conventional drones are easy to track, monitor and regulate. Bio-drones are not. They blur the boundary between wildlife robotics and surveillance. You can ban a quad copper. You can't ban every pigeon from flying over a power station. If countries begin using biodrones for covert operation, attribution becomes nearly impossible. And because the technology relies on off-the-shelf electronics and established neurosurgical techniques, experts worry it could proliferate quickly if not governed properly. But its scientific value is undeniable. The same brain-machine interface technologies used in these experiments are also pushing forward treatments for Parkinson's disease, epilepsy, paralysis and sensory restoration. Better implants, more stable electrodes and smarter stimulation algorithms all have genuine medical applications. That dual nature is what makes this field both exciting and troubling. The line between therapeutic technology and surveillance technology is very thin and often depends entirely on intent. Right now, biodrones are not widespread, verified or mass-produced. They are a blend of legitimate neuroscience, bold engineering and unproven corporate claims. But the trajectory is clear. The tools to guide animal behavior through neural interfaces are getting smaller, lighter and more reliable. And as the technology matures, the debate around it will also get louder. That was all from me this week. I am Soumya Pillai and you were watching Pure Science on the Print.